everybody thank you thank you very much and I see these signs all over the place Tigers for Trump I like that I like that hello Missouri I'm thrilled to be back in the American heartland right here with the incredible men and women that make this country run you know it too in just five days, the people of Missouri are going to retire far-left Democrat Claire McCaskill. Who's been saying such nice things about me. But you know what? She'll never vote with me. That's the problem. She's been saying nice things. I said, I didn't know she was a Republican. She'll never vote. She'll never vote. She never has. And she didn't even vote for Justice Kavanaugh. Think of that. Didn't vote. And you're going to send Missouri Patriot. And that's what he is. He loves your state. He loves you as people. He loves this country. Josh Hawley to the United States Senate. He's a good man. He'll be a star. Josh shares your values, and he will fight for your values all the time. So I need everyone to show up and vote. You got to vote for Josh. And that's why I'm here, other than the fact I like you very much. And I'm actually coming back on Monday. Do you believe it? Coming back to Missouri on Monday. We've got to make sure he's a star in our country. He is going to be something special. He's going to represent you for a long time, and he's going to represent you well. This is one of the most important elections of our lifetime. This election will decide whether we build on an extraordinary prosperity that we have achieved, probably the greatest economy in the history of our nation. Think about it. or whether we let Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi and Claire McCaskill and the radical Democrats wipe it all away. And they can do that. We got to win. Under Republican leadership, America is booming. America is thriving. 
and America is winning because we are finally putting America first. The unemployment rate just fell to the lowest level in over 50 years. More Americans are working now than any time in history. Think of that. More Americans. Just think of that. So today, right now, we have more Americans working than any time, any time in the history of our country. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That'll be a very good sound bite in the debate when we face one of those Democrats, whoever it may be. African-American and Hispanic-American poverty are at an all-time low. Our economy is at an all-time high. We've cut a record number of job killing regulations more than any administration in the history of our country in less than two years, by the way, in less than two years. So we've done in less than two years what any other president or administration did in four years, in eight years, or in one case, in more than eight years. We've cut more. Pretty good. And we have more to cut. Republicans passed a massive tax cut for working families, and we will soon follow it up with another 10% tax cut for the middle class. And remember, the Democrats are going to substantially raise your taxes, just what you need. We're putting our coal miners and steel workers back to work. We're taking care of our veterans and our military. And we will soon have the most powerful military that we've ever had by far. The choice in this election could not be more clear. The Republican agenda is the mainstream agenda of the American people. It's how we all got here. The greatest movement in the history of politics in our country. It's about you, not about me. The Democrat agenda is the agenda of the extreme far left. They've gone crazy, folks. They've gone totally loco. Republicans are the party of all Americans. We welcome citizens from all walks of life and embrace freedom of thought, freedom of speech, and freedom of everything else. The Democrats are the party of rigid ideology and total conformity. They demand absolute agreement, and they dismiss, demean, and demonize anyone who questions their radical ideas. Did you ever see anything like what's going on? You can't have dinner. You can't have dinner. Do you see what they're doing to our people? I mean, see what they're doing to people that represent our thought? And we're being so nice. We're being so nice. And let's stay being nice, right? We'll stay being nice. Because we are tough as hell. We, we're going to stay nice. We're going to stay nice. Don't forget, we've got the police law enforcement loves us. I don't know if they get anything out of it. I said to the police the other day, we're so high in the polls, we're trying to figure out who is representing the other side. We don't even know. We want to figure it out. But we have the police, we have law enforcement. They're great people. We have bikers for Trump. Bikers for Trump. Is that 100% or like 95%? We have 
The military is for us. The vets are for us. The veterans are all for us. Veterans' choice. We got them, veterans' choice. No, we want to be nice. We're much tougher. We're much smarter. We're much more sane. We believe in the process. We don't run around like Antifa with the little arms and then go home, back home, into mommy's basement. And put on the black uniform and the black helmet. Oh, it's so disappointing when those helmets fall off and you look at this weak little face, isn't it? And they hit people with clubs, you know? They hit them again and again. Oh, they're so lucky with nice soul. Oh, they're so lucky. And they go back home and they get yelled at by mom and dad. The Democrats, a lie. And you know what I'm going to say, because this effort is the angry far left media. The great Ed Rollins just said, I just heard it, that never before has a president had to withstand the level of partisan assault from the media that President Trump has had to withstand. No, it's true. There's nobody ever had to take this. If we do great things, they come out bad. No matter what we do, we could do the greatest in the world, should have gone faster. Well, they're doing that a little bit with, not a little bit, how about a lot? With North Korea. I took over North Korea. You know, President Obama knows they were ready to go to war. And now we're getting along, no rockets, no nothing. They say, why can't he go faster? They've been doing this for 75 years. Why can't he go for four months? It's been a long time. It's been a long time. And today I spoke to President Xi, great guy, great man from China. And he is the boss, he's the head of China. And we spoke and I said, look, we have to make a fair trade deal. He wants to do it. They all want to do it. We're going to make lots of great things that are going to happen over the next short period of time. But we had a, a great talk with President Xi on North Korea. We had a great, and the border is holding and they've been honorable and they're doing what they said they were going to do. And my relationship with Kim Jong-un is very good. And we are getting to a point where they really want to do something. And we're not going to have to worry about millions of lives being lost and nuclear weapons going up all over the place and flying over Japan and everybody else. No, it's been amazing. But no matter what you do, they actually got to a point because, you know, with North Korea, it is. We got our hostages back, right? We're getting the remains. I don't know if you saw how beautiful that was. Mike Pence went to Hawaii. The remains of our great heroes from so many years ago are being sent back. That, that never happened. Nobody expected that. That was so beautiful. And they're all coming. They're coming back. They're coming back rapidly. No more missiles going up. No more nuclear tests for a long time. If you read the papers today, it came out to the surprise of a lot of people, not a surprise to me, that they don't mind having people come over, the experts, and check the sites. We're doing well. And we kept the sanctions on. The sanctions are what we have. The sanctions are, we haven't taken sanctions off, and hopefully we'll be able to when we're down the road. We want to take the sanctions off. We want North Korea to be very successful. But you know what? The new line, they met. M-E-T, they met. We met. In other words, I actually met. And that's the thing we gave up. I said, I met. How am I going to do it if I don't meet? I met. So, so their new line is, he met. And because he met, it's a terrible thing for our country. Let me tell you, we would be in a nuclear war right now if the right person didn't come along. So we're doing well. We're doing well. And again, with China, we're doing really well, too, on trade. They want to make a deal. We've got to make the right deal. $500 billion a year for years have been coming out of this country and lots of other things. 
And I said, we have to make the right deal. We're going to make the right deal. It's going to work out good. But we had a great conversation today that you know about. Nobody else does. Now today, that's going to be the news. Sorry about that, Josh. <laughs> but he understands it. He gets it. We're doing great. As a country, we're doing great. We've never done better. We are doing really well. And they're attacking me, really, because I'm fighting for you. And that's okay. That's a good reason, because... Because we really have to bypass the media, because it's so one-sided and unfair, in order to get straight to the American people. That's what we're doing. So that's what we're doing, and it seems to work out pretty well, because here we are. Right? Here we are, folks. But someday, we're going to get a good story from these people, someday. And it's not all of them. Look, you have some of the fine people, some of really finest people I know. I know reporters, journalists, others, they're fine people. But some are not honest, and we have to, we have to just go around them. We just have to go around them, and we have gone around them like nobody in history has ever gone around them. Republicans believe in lower taxes, less regulation, and more American energy. We just became number one in the world in energy production. Thank you. It's amazing what you can do with cutting regulations that are unnecessary. Amazing. And some regulations, by the way, are very necessary. I want the cleanest water on the planet. We want the cleanest air on the planet, and we've got it. But we want to keep it just that way. We've got it. Better now than ever before. Democrats want higher taxes, much higher taxes. They want many more regulations, and they want to shut down American energy. We're not shutting down American energy. It's an asset for us. Republicans want strong borders, no crime, no chaos, and no caravans. Thank you. Thank you. And the wall is being built. We spent 1.6 billion. We spent another 1.6 billion this last year. We're getting another one. We want to build it all at one time. We need it. They are doing everything in their power, the Democrats, to delay it and to stop it. And you need the wall. And now it's more obvious than ever. We'll get it. We'll get it. We'll get it. I don't like doing it in bits and pieces, but that's what they're forcing us to do. And, you know, we called up the military because we're not going to let people come into our country when you look at that illegally. Not going to happen. A great military. And I don't know if you saw the one is coming up. That's a big caravan. The only time I've seen them, they underestimate the crowd. They want to underestimate that crowd, which is easy for them, actually, to do. But that's a lot of people. Now, if you see what's going on in El Salvador, and if you see what's going on in Honduras, and if you see what's going on in lots of places, they're starting little mini caravans. Not going to happen, folks. And the second, I call it caravan number two. That one came out. Did you see these people? Did you see how tough? These young men, mostly young men, strong, tough, what they did to the police, the Mexican police, and breaking through the border, what they did, what they did to the Mexican military in breaking through the border, these are tough people. These are not angels. These are not little angels. These are tough people. And we're not 
letting them into our country. They're not coming in illegally. And you take a look at the scene where thousands and thousands of people are marching. And then you hear that Democrats want to have open borders and they want to invite caravan after caravan into our country, overwhelming your schools, your hospitals and your communities. And by the way, those caravans, you know, you look at what's happening. Does anybody think that's just by accident that they're forming? Does anybody think? Does anybody think? You know, I think what happened, I really believe somebody was involved. That's it, not on our side of the ledger. Somebody was involved. And then somebody else told him, you made a big mistake. Look at what happened. You have made a big mistake because people have really galvanized over this. We want people to come into our country, but they have to come into our country legally and through merit and through merit. We need people. With a 3.7 unemployment, we have many, many companies moving back into our country. I was with Prime Minister Abe of Japan. He gave me company after company, automobile company, moving to Michigan, moving to Ohio, moving to Pennsylvania. You don't really need them over here. You're doing so well, but you want one? I'll get you one too. No, but they're moving. And I'm not just talking about automobile companies. You look at, look at how well your economy is doing now. Your economy was horrible a number of years ago. Look at your economy. Look what's happened. But we need people to come in to help run North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida. We need people to help run these massive car companies and other companies. Look what we got. Foxconn, one of the great companies of the world, what they did in Wisconsin. For Governor Walker, I mean, what he's done, what he did, and I was very much involved with that one, and I want to give him full credit, because I'll tell you what, I gave him that one, and he took it and got it done. It's one of the great companies of the world, and you have to see what they built. You have to see what they built in Wisconsin. Scott Walker. You have to see what they built. It's incredible, actually. It's uh, as good as anything I've ever seen. But we need people. But we need people that can do the job. We need people. It has to be based on merit. No more lotteries. Oh, let's see. Lottery, lottery. Who are these people? You know, when countries do lotteries and they put people in a lottery, do you really believe they're giving us their finest? And then we have problems that we say we don't understand it. Republicans want judges who will interpret our Constitution as written. They don't want to make them up. Democrats want judges who will rewrite the Constitution to impose their own radical views. And you see that happening at the border, and you see it happening all over. But we've appointed a lot of judges. We'll soon have a record in the number of federal district judges and judges that we've appointed. And of course, Two Supreme Court judges, two Supreme Court, two great justices of the Supreme Court. A few weeks ago, we achieved that historic victory for our Constitution and for the rule of law. We defeated the Democrat mob and proudly swore in the newest member of the United States Supreme Court, who was treated very, very unfairly, by the way, Justice Brett Kavanaugh. Justice Kavanaugh was treated as unfairly as any human being I've ever seen. I've never seen anything like it. But in the end, they all got smart and we got him on. He was supposed to be a Supreme Court judge like 10 years ago, 12 years ago, long before I did this. I used to hear about a man named Brett Kavanaugh who someday will be on the Supreme Court because of the intellect great scholar, great everything. And then he gets treated like the way he was treated. How unfair. 
was that. But we got them in, and this will be the election of Kavanaugh, the caravans, law and order, tax cuts, and common sense. Common sense. A Republican Congress means more jobs and less crime. A Democrat Congress means more crime and less jobs. So that sort of works. That's pretty good, isn't it? Wow. I'd almost like to repeat that. That's pretty good. This election is a choice between Republican results and radical resistance. It's a choice between greatness and gridlock. It's a choice between jobs and mobs. And it's a choice between an economy that is going strong and the Democrats who are going crazy. So true. So this November 6th, vote against the Democrats and vote for common sense Republicans. You're going to drain the swamp. You're going to replace the Democrats. It's happening. It's happening so fast. It's happening faster than anybody can believe. You know, it's all happening much faster than anybody could believe. Even one of them recently said that President Trump made promises, but he's kept many more promises. I mean, far more than I made. Think of it. It's true. It's true. It's true. And we're not even that close to the second year. You know, we're not that close, right? We still have a couple of months to go. And we've done a lot. We are honored tonight to be joined by a man that I've gotten to know very well, one of your Republican great people and a great leader, Governor Mike Parsons. Mike, where's Mike? Thanks, Mike. You're doing a great job. But I want to take full credit for what's happened in Missouri, Mike. Is that okay? Great job, Mike. Thank you. A friend of mine who's so outstanding, is with us all the time, works hard, loves the people of this state and loves this state, Senator Roy Blunt. Thanks, Roy. Great guy. And representatives, congressmen, women, great people that really work, and they always, they always are with us. They never let us down. Blaine Lutkenmeyer. Vicki Hartzler. A man who uh, did an auction recently. That was the coolest thing I've seen in a long time. You know, you get used to watching those hearings and you're just falling asleep. And then you hear this sound, you say, what the hell is that? It was Billy Long. How good was he? And is he a great guy? <laughs> Congressman Billy Long, great guy, great friend of mine. And of course, a man who, again, loves this state and loves the people and gets it done, never lets us down, Jason Smith. Jason. Thank you, Jason. Great group. Thank you also to former United States Attorney General John Ashcroft and his son, Secretary of State Jay Ashcroft, for being here. Thank you both. Thank you, fellas. We're especially proud to be joined by a star. This is somebody that's going to win. He's going to go on to great, great things in our country. And he's been a winner from day one. We're very proud of him. He's doing well. He's up in the polls, but do yourself. Just pretend he's one point down, please, okay? Because he is outstanding. We cannot take a chance on something going awry on Tuesday. That's why I'm coming again on Monday. 
We can't take that chance. You people in Missouri, you're going to say, I can't believe it. The president's here again. But I'm here because I believe in Josh Hawley. And come on up, Josh. Come on. Isn't it an incredible honor to have President Donald Trump in Missouri? It's amazing. It's amazing. You know, you know, President Trump won in the state of Missouri in 2016 by 20 points. 20 points. More than anybody. And President Trump is delivering for Missouri. He's delivering. Now, the only thing is I noticed that some of those career politicians in Washington, D.C., haven't noticed and haven't gotten with the program. Like, for instance, Senator Claire McCaskill. Sad. You know, President Trump, President Trump is putting pro-Constitution, pro-America judges on the bench, but Claire McCaskill voted no. President Trump is securing our border, but Claire McCaskill, she voted no. She voted no. Do you know, Senator McCaskill voted for amnesty. She voted against the wall. Now she's sponsoring an open borders bill in the United States Congress. Is that what we want? <laughs> President Trump, President Trump lowered your taxes. But Claire McCaskill voted no. You know, I, I guess the only thing I can think of that can explain it is Claire McCaskill did say that she thinks that the reason President Trump got elected was because of the Russians. Yeah, I'm serious. Yeah, right. What she doesn't realize is he's president of the United States because of the Missourians. It's because of us. When I, look at, when I look at Senator McCaskill's record, I, I have to say, Mr. President, it really reminds me of another career politician that you recently defeated. It, it reminds me of the person that Claire thinks should be president, Hillary Clinton. I mean, get this, get this. You know, Claire McCaskill, Claire McCaskill has spent her lifetime in politics, just like Hillary. Claire McCaskill has made a boatload of money on federal taxpayers, just like Hillary. Claire McCaskill even has a phony foundation that rakes in millions of dollars a year, pays no taxes, just like Hillary. You know, Claire McCaskill, Claire McCaskill wanted us to call Hillary Clinton Madam President. Well, well, on November the 6th, because of the leadership of Donald Trump, on November the 6th, we're going to call Claire McCaskill fired. Let's go get it done. So Josh Hawley will be one of the greatest champions for Missouri that you've ever had. And you've had some good ones, by the way. You've had some good ones, haven't you? Josh is running against far-left Democrat and card-carrying member of the Washington, D.C. group that we all know so much about, Claire McCaskill, who, by the way, I've seen commercials, I've seen her statements. She now all of a sudden loves border security. Where did that come from? Did you? <laughs> Today, I was watching her interview, and every time, every third sentence, like, we love Trump. We love border security. The president's right about border security. I said, what happened to her? Look, the fact is she wants to get elected, and then she's always going to vote against us, folks, okay? A vote for Claire is a vote to make Chuck Schumer, 
majority leader and to enact the extreme agenda of Nancy Pelosi and, of course, the legendary Maxine Waters. Clara McCaskill promised to represent the people of Missouri, but she broke that promise and joined radical Democrats in Washington. She's not representing Missouri. And Josh said it. I won by 20 points. I know the people. I know the people. Your senator, Senator Blunt, knows me very well. He will tell you. I know the area well. We campaigned. We worked together. And we know the people. That's not what you want. You don't want Claire McCaskill. She voted against the massive tax cuts that you got. And by the way, she will end up trying with them. They got a long way to go trying to increase your taxes very substantially. She voted against Neil Gorsuch, and she joined the Democrat mob and voted against our great justice, Brett Kavanaugh. She's got one of the most open borders until today. Voting records in Congress today, she changed. I must take that back. Did she change? Maybe. Josh, did she change? She's totally for open borders, but today she thinks I'm right. I don't know. But you know what? On November 7th, she'll say I was wrong. Claire McCaskill voted no on Kate's law. She voted no on enhanced vetting for refugees. Just let them come in, folks. Let them come in. Did you see the guy today? They interviewed him. I put it on on social media, because I'm being nice. And they said, well, what do you want? Well, I want a pardon, I want a pardon. The woman, like, she's like this reporter, I guess, and innocent, nice. Oh, you want a pardon? What did you do? What did you do? What did you do? Um, a murder, murder, homicide, something. What did you do? Murder. And she, this was one of the people in the caravan, by the way. What did you do? Murder. You want murder? You want a pardon? This is, can you believe what's going on in this country? But we're getting a change. This big ship is turning a lot faster than anyone thought possible. And remember that Claire McCaskill voted in favor of deadly sanctuary cities. We don't want sanctuary cities. So don't listen to what Claire says. Just look at how she votes. All you have to do is take a look. She votes with the crazy Democrats, and they have gone crazy. A vote for Claire is a vote for more taxes, more crime, and more illegal immigration. Very simple. And just to finish up, you vote for Josh. You're going to reduce your taxes. You're going to substantially reduce crime. We're doing great anyway, considering we have the worst immigration laws in the history of the world, the dumbest laws, laws that make no sense on illegal immigration. But we're doing well anyway. We're taking thousands and thousands of MS-13 gang members, and we're throwing them the hell out of the country back where they came from. And you know who's doing that? Law enforcement and ICE. They want to get rid of ICE. And nobody in this room, I see a couple of guys that wouldn't mind. Let me see a couple of people. I see one woman there that wouldn't mind, too. But uh, nobody here wants to do that. And they do it. It's like a day in the office. They're tough and they're smart. And that's what you have to be. You have to be tough. These people, they call them nests. You go into a, a nest. They are bad. Everyone needs to show up and vote for Josh Hawley. Please do it. Please do it. A majority of the Democrats on the ballot for Congress have already signed up to support a total socialist takeover of health care that would totally destroy Medicare. So true. The Democrat plan would eliminate Medicare Advantage for more than 400,000 Missouri seniors who depend on it. Republicans want to protect Medicare for our great seniors who have earned it. And guess what? They've paid for it. They've been paying for it for a long time. And Republicans will always protect patients with pre-existing conditions. 
The Democrat plan also raised Medicare to fund benefits for illegal aliens. That's great. Democrats are the party of open borders, socialism, and crime, whether you like it or not. As we speak, the Democrat Party is openly encouraging millions of illegal aliens to break our laws, violate our borders, and bankrupt our country. And they want to sign them up for free health care, free welfare, free education, and, of course, the right to vote. Great. And the Democrats want to continue giving automatic birthright citizenship to every child born to an illegal alien, even if they've been on our soil for a mere matter of seconds. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of children born to illegal immigrants are made automatic citizens of the United States every year because of this crazy, lunatic policy that we can end, that we can end. We need support, but we can end. And they're all made instantly eligible for every privilege and benefit of American citizenship. All of you, you get nothing more than they do. They're full citizens. And it's costing us many, many billions of dollars a year. You don't realize what a big industry. It's an industry. And many come from China. You'll be surprised. China now is number one. We're not talking just South America, Latin America. We're, we're talking about China, parts of Asia. It's crazy. Think of it. You're an enemy of our country. You're a general with war on your mind. You're a dictator who we hate and who's against us. And that dictator has his wife have a baby on American soil. Congratulations. Your son or daughter is now an American citizen. Does anybody think this makes sense? Does anybody think it makes sense? Congratulations, General. You have a United States citizen as your daughter. It's crazy. It's crazy. But we're getting it all worked out. This policy has even created an entire industry. It's called, you know, birth tourism where pregnant mothers from all over the world travel to America to make their children instant, lifelong citizens with guaranteed everything, everything. Everything that you have is guaranteed. Welfare, public benefits, right? Birthright citizens, in turn, can then bring their entire extended family into our country through chain migration. That's another beauty. Chain migration. You come into the country, you're like two months old, and you're going to take your brother and your sister and your mother and your father. You're going to bring them all, aunts and uncles and grandfathers and lots of people. I tell the story. We have a horrible incident took place on the West Side Highway a year ago where a maniac decided to kill people. So he's driving his car at a very, very high rate of speed along a park right along the beautiful Hudson River. And there's a group of people working out and running and all sorts of things. Recreation, most beautiful park along the river. And he decides to hang a right and run over many people. Eight people died. They never mention all the people that have been so horrifically injured where they lose arms and legs and everything else. They never mention. They say eight people died. What they don't tell you is that many arms lost, many legs lost, so they got him, this maniac. He'll be in court for the next 20 years, you know, fighting, claiming something with some good lawyer. But we'll get him eventually. And what happens? He is a man that, through chain migration, brought in his mother, his father, his uncles, his brothers, his sisters. They think it's probably 22 people came on and into this country because of this guy who killed eight people and so gravely wounded and injured so many more. It's a disgrace, and we got to change our laws, and the Democrats refuse to do it. And it's not because they don't know right from wrong. They think it's good politically for them to make us all go through hell to get those laws changed. We're going to get them changed, okay? 
Democrats want to spend your money and give away your resources to the benefit of everyone but the American citizens. We're changing that rapidly, if you've noticed. If you want a government that cares about you, vote Republican. If you want your children to have a country, vote Republican. You want to have a country. If you don't want America to be overrun by masses of illegal aliens and giant caravans, you better vote Republican. If you want to keep drugs, gangs, crimes, if you want to keep human traffickers, think of that. In the history of our country, human traffickers, they steal, they kidnap women, many, many, many women, but they kidnap people and it's a big business because of the internet. It's worse today, worldwide, worse today than ever before. Think of it, the human traffickers. Who would even think this goes on? These are horrible, horrible people. And we are working on that so hard. It's because of the internet. The internet gives them this tremendous advantage. They use the internet for horrible, horrible means, including ISIS, which as you know, we've done a very serious number with. But we're going to keep these people out of our country. Vote Republican. And I told you we're finishing the wall. We're working on the wall. We're taking down MS-13. We're supporting the heroes of ICE and Border Patrol and law enforcement. You are going to get Josh Hawley. We're going to finish it up. We're so far ahead of schedule, it's incredible. This election is about safety, and it's also about your prosperity. We're going to keep it going. In less than two years' time, we have created over four, think of this, we've created in less than two, nobody would believe it, the wonderful media back there, I'm trying to be nice. The wonderful media, if I would have said during the campaign that we're going to create 4.2 million new jobs since the election and lifted over 4 million Americans off of food stamps, they'd say, how could he dare say a thing like that? Well, that's what we did. Far, far, far greater than anyone else. We've created almost 600,000 new manufacturing jobs. You remember the previous administration? We can't create manufacturing jobs anymore. They're the best jobs. They're the most important jobs. They're great jobs, and they're high-paying jobs. And we do it better than anybody. 600,000, and it's going up rapidly as these companies come back into the United States. They all want to be in the United States because now, for the first time in decades, we are where it's at. We're the hot country. Can you believe it? We're the hot country. And you know what? As a country, we are respected again. We're respected again. We're respected again. You didn't think you'd hear that, right? You never thought you'd hear that. They respect us. China respects us. And everybody, Russia respects us. They all respect the United States. They all respect what we've done. You know, I meet a lot of leaders. They're great, you know, some of them. Some I like, some I don't like. What the hell? But every one of them, they come in, they say, Mr. President, congratulations on what you've done for this country. What you've done with the economy is incredible. We have the hottest economy in the world. Think of it. And they all come in, congratulations, congratulations. African-American unemployment has reached its lowest rate ever in recorded history. African-American youth unemployment is at an all-time historic low. The Democrats have undermined jobs and wages in the African-American community for years, for decades, for a century. Republicans are fighting and delivering every day for the African-American community, and they know it. They see it. The support is incredible.
Hispanic American and Asian American unemployment rates have also reached all-time historic lows. Thanks to our pledge to America's workers, in just three months, we have secured commitments from over 160 of the biggest companies in our country to train and recruit more than 6 million workers, 5% of our force. <laughs> Women's unemployment just fell to 3.6%, which is, as you know, you've heard it say, I'm trying to get that historic number. It's only 65 years, women. You know, they keep saying I'm not doing well with women. They said that before the last election. They said it be <laughs> They said it before the last election. And then when the election was over, they said, you know, it's an amazing thing. He did great with women. What the hell? We're doing great. You know why? Women are smart. Women are smart. They're smarter than the men, but don't say I say. Women are smart, and they want security. They have to have security. They need borders. They want borders. They don't want people pouring into the country that you don't know where they come from, who they are, what their record is. There's nothing. Women want security. They want jobs, and they want homes, and they want... But they have to have security. And women want security. And that's why we're doing great with women. And we always have done well with women. Last month, I announced that we are replacing the horrible NAFTA deal, one of the worst trade deals ever made, probably the worst, with an incredible brand new U.S.-Mexico-Canada agreement, the USMCA, right? Remember, they said, oh, he's never going to be able to get it done. We got it. And not only did we get it done, you're very happy with it. Everybody's happy. We're happy. We're happy with it. The USMCA is a massive victory for Missouri farmers, manufacturers, and dairy producers. We opened up Canada. It was closed. We opened up Canada. They'd gladly taken our stuff. Thanks to our tariffs, Steel mills all across the nation are roaring back to life. I taxed all of the dumped garbage steel. They were dumping garbage on our shores. I taxed them 25%. What you never hear is that billions of dollars will be flowing into our coffers. Billions, they're paying billions of dollars. And our steel industry, as you know very well, is one of the hottest industries right now in the country. It's incredible what's happened in literally six months since I started really going to town on it. And aluminum, and aluminum. And by the way, we need a steel industry. We were gonna have no steel industry within a couple of years. U.S. Steel is now building seven plants. They're renovating plants. Nucor is building these massive new plants. They're going to town. And wait till you see what's going to happen. Ultimately, we're getting the iron ore from Minnesota, the finest quality stuff. We're getting it from here. We're getting it from all over. Our mines are opening up. Our miners are working again, not just with coal. It's an incredible thing to see. But we need a steel industry. You know, some industries we can do without. I won't mention because probably some of you are in those industries. But we need steel for defense. What happens if we don't have steel? We were not going to have steel in a couple of years. It was, gonna, it was a dead business. What happens if we don't have steel and we need it for military conflict and hope that will never happen? We're going to call up China and say, listen, we need some steel. Help, help, we need steel. We don't want to ask anybody for help. So, our steel industry is now thriving and getting better every single day. And it's jobs, and it's that money pouring into our coffers. It's beautiful. We've also taken the toughest ever action to crack down on China's abusive trade practices. And they understand it. And I think we're going to work that deal for very, you know, very good. I think it's going to be very good. And if it's not, I'll let you know. <laughs> it's got to be unbelievably good, because if it's not, they're going to say it's a terrible deal. And if it's unbelievably good, they'll say it's okay. If you read that the deal is okay, you know I really struck gold for this country. Okay. It's okay. 
He got the deal done. It's okay. You know, we'll make billions and billions and they'll say, okay, it's all right. Not bad. It's going to have to be really good for that. After years of rebuilding other countries, we are finally rebuilding, folks, our country. Every day, it's promises made, promises kept. We've taken bold action to reduce the price of prescription drugs. We're reducing the price. The drug companies are liking me too much now, but that's okay. That's okay. I've had people say that's more important than almost anything. I have people that say, because we've done great on health care, but I've had people say, that reducing the cost of pres prescription drugs is maybe, in a certain way, more important than health care. And you watch what's going to happen. Just watch prescription drug prices. You know, I called up Pfizer and some of the great drug companies, the great companies, Novartis, a couple of others, about a month ago, because they raised the price of their drugs. And I called, I said, what are you doing? You can't do that. I'm cutting prices. Look, it's all profit. So much profit. They make so much profit. But they just raised it. You know, why? Why not? They've been raising it for years. They got away with it with the politicians that didn't know what the hell they were doing. <laughs> so they were raising the price of drugs, and they were going to raise them substantially. And they announced the raise. One after the other, I called my people. Secretary Alex Azar is fantastic. I said, I got to call these people. I called the head of Pfizer. I called some of the others. And that's when I realized this is a very powerful office. They had raised them. They had announced the raise of price. And they said, sir, we will immediately drop the price down to where it was. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? It didn't get much news, folks, but you know it. You know it. At least I can tell you. Might as well talk about yourself, because nobody else is going to. <laughs> nobody else is going to. Nobody else. So these drug companies, and I do appreciate uh, Pfizer and Novartis and so many others, they really did. They dropped it down. Now they're going to drop it down because we're getting rid of a lot of the middleman, it's called. I never heard middleman and middlewoman. You probably have some women in there too. So we'll call them the middleman and the middlewoman. But this tremendous gap of wasted money. And we're knocking it down, and we are, you're going to see some great results very soon. To help critically ill patients get life-saving treatment, we passed something that they've been trying to pass for 46 years. It's called Right to Try. You all know what it is. Hopefully nobody has to use it. I don't want you to use it. I hope you don't have to use it, but we have the finest doctors and research and medicines in the world. And it's in a pipeline, and it takes a while, although we've cut the time way, way down. It was almost 15 years to get something approved. We're cutting it down. We're trying to get it. Scott, we're trying to get it down to three or four years. We have to be careful. But if we had something that really looked promising and somebody was terminally ill, they could not use that drug. And you'd see them if they had money. If they didn't, they'd go home, and there was nothing they could do. They're looking for hope. And what happened is they go all over the world. They go to Asia, they go to Europe, all over the world, looking for a secret cure. And we have the best chance right here. So now you go in, you sign a piece of paper, which is just fine, and you get taken care of. And we have had some incredible results already. It's amazing. It's really amazing. It's amazing. It's also a great way to see if it works, to be honest with you. I mean, it's a great way. But it gives these people hope. It gives them hope. And they don't have to go all over the world to much lesser talents and look for something. We have had already, this was three months ago, already some amazing stories. We passed Veterans Choice, giving our veterans the right to see a private doctor. 44 years! And I thought it was my idea. And I said, I had the greatest idea. I went to my people, I have the greatest idea. What you'll do is instead of having them wait seven days, 23 days, 38 days, three months, we have had patients and people
that were not very sick. And by the time they saw the doctor, they were literally terminally ill. Now you go out and you see a private doctor and we pay the bill. And Senator Blunt helped a lot on that. Senator Blunt. But I thought that was my idea. I'm telling you, I walked off. I said, man, am I smart. I'm so smart. <laughs> then I went to my people. I said, I have an idea. We're going to take the person off the line, let them go see a local doctor, maybe a block away. We pay the bill. They said, yes, sir, we've been working on this for 44 years. <laughs> but I got it done. So, you know, at least I got it approved, right? At least I got it approved. And we passed the VA accountability law to ensure anyone who mistreats our veterans will be held accountable and we'll just look at them and we'll say, get out of here, you're fired. Right. We secured $700 billion and the second year, $716 billion to fully rebuild the United States military. And I know it doesn't mean anything to the warriors that are with us tonight in the military. I know they couldn't care less about this, but we gave them their largest pay raise in more than 10 years. They don't care. They don't care about that. And at my direction, the Pentagon is now working to create the sixth branch of the American Armed Forces. It's called the Space Force. We're keeping America safe from radical Islamic terrorism. Be very careful. And we are keeping open the detention facility at Guantanamo Bay. I withdrew the United States from the horrible, one-sided Iran nuclear deal. What a difference that made. Iran is not the same country it was when I came into office, I will tell you. They were looking to take over Syria and Yemen and every place, Iraq. Right now, they want to survive. They were looking to the Mediterranean, which is very far away. They wanted to see the Mediterranean. Right now, they have to survive. It's not the same country. Not the same country. Hopefully, they're going to get smart. Hopefully, they're going to get smart, and we have recognized the capital of Israel, and opened the American Embassy in Jerusalem. Together, we've made extraordinary progress, and we are just getting started. But if Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, Claire McCaskill, and the crazy Democrats, and one thing I will say, even Claire McCaskill today said they are crazy Democrats, which is pretty good. If they get back into power, they will try everything they can to raise the hell out of your taxes and restore those regulations that have meant so much. Impose socialism, destroy your Medicare, and eliminate your borders. If you vote Republican this November, we will continue to cut your taxes more so. We're working on bills right now. It's more money going into our system, believe it or not. Cut your regulations and raise your incomes. We will protect Medicare. And remember during the debates, during the debates, I was the only one, I said, we will protect your Social Security. Nothing's happened with your Social Security. We will continue to confirm judges who will support and defend the Constitution of the United States. We will fully secure the border. We will pass Kate's law. We will stop sanctuary cities. We will do all of it. And folks, I'll tell you what, we have a tremendous opportunity to do something tremendous, just so great for our country. This is a very important election. These are the midterms. Nobody thought of the midterms as being that big a deal for years, for years. Nobody thought of the midterms. You know, you hear midterms, it's like, let's go to sleep, right? This year, we're breaking every single record in attendance for the midterms. They're getting more people than some of the presidential elections.
more people. And in one way, it's a beautiful thing. And I will tell you, we have gotten tremendous numbers. Tremendous numbers of Republicans are going out to vote. Now, we did have two maniacs stop a momentum that was incredible because for seven days, nobody talked about the elections. It stopped a tremendous momentum. More importantly, we have to take care of our people. And we don't care about momentum when it comes to a disgrace like just happened to our country. But it did, nevertheless, stop a certain momentum. And now the momentum is picking up. And it's picked up based on common sense. It's picked up based on strong borders. It's picked up based on taxes. It's picked up based on everything you can think of that makes sense. Just add it in. We will lift millions of our citizens from welfare to work, dependence to independence, and poverty to prosperity. For years you watched as your leaders apologized for America. Now you have a president who is standing up for America. Proudly. We are standing up for your values. We are standing up for Missouri. And we are proudly standing up for our national anthem. Along with the Tigers. Right? For every voter across this land, whether you are registered as a Democrat or Republican or an Independent, we are asking for your support so that we can protect your family, your prosperity, and we can protect your great country. To continue our incredible momentum, you must reject the Democrat politics of anger and hatred and division and fear. And you see it. You must say no to open borders, no to socialism, and no to higher job-killing taxes. You must say no to Democrats and you must say yes to Republicans. You must vote for Josh Hawley. Get out there. <laughs> Loyal citizens like you help build this country. And together we are taking back our country, returning power to you, the American people. This is where we all started. It was right here in Missouri that the great explorers, Lewis and Clark, that's very impressive. That's very impressive. Lewis and Clark, that's big time, began their epic journey across the American West. Their voyage of discovery led generations of tough frontier men and strong, brilliant pioneer women to defy the dangers and brave the wilderness to build a life and to build a home. They didn't have a lot of money. They didn't have a lot of luxury, but they had one thing in common, they love their families, they love their country, and they loved their God. True. 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 These courageous Americans did not shed their blood, sweat, and tears so that we could sit at home while others tried to erase their legacy, tear down our history, and destroy our proud American heritage. We didn't do that. For the sake of our freedom and for the sake of our children, we are going to work, we are going to fight, and we are going to win, win, win. We will not bend. We will not break. We will never give in. We will never give up. We will never back down. We will never surrender, ever, ever, ever. We will always go on. We will fight only to victory. We are one people and one family and one glorious American destiny. We all share the same home. We all share the same heart. We all salute the same flag. 
and we are all made by the same almighty God. And to the people of Missouri, we will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. We will make America safe again. And we will make America great again. Thank you, Missouri. Thank you. Thank you. My soul.